Thank you.
to welcome you as we remember and honor the life of Sherry this morning. Thank you so much for joining us 
Mm -hmm. We'd also like to extend our thanks to Rocap Shannon Funeral Home for their support during this difficult time. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we acknowledge your presence here right now, Lord. And we come before you as friends and family of Sherry. We pray for our time together now as we honor the life Sherry lived. Thank you for her life. And Lord, we need your help today. Those here today are here because they love Sherry, miss her, and cherish their memories with her. And I pray for each one here today, Lord, that you would comfort Sherry's family and friends. And thank you for your presence here now. In Jesus' name, amen. At this time, I'd like to welcome up Dan Malone to share our first song with us. For those of you that have that have known Sherry for any length of time, you know that she loved this song. Uh, in fact, she sang it many times right here in this room with her angelic voice and uh, his eyes on the sparrow. discouraged and why should the shadows come and why should my heart be lonely and long for heaven and home
Thank you so much, Dan. At this time, I'd like to welcome up Jeff Parks to come and share some remarks with us. Good morning. <clears throat> when I met Mom, uh, she was still Mrs. Still to me, and I was another one of her crispy critters. Um, it wasn't long after I noticed Samantha at school that I began hanging out after hours in Mrs. Sill's classroom, which was a common tactic for all the boys that were interested in Samantha. <laughs> One such occasion, Samantha and Mom were talking about food, and someone mentioned Stewart's root beer, the uh, drive-in. As I had never been, I asked, what's that? And Mom, um, full of playful incredulity, exclaimed, what? And made a face that we've captured actually on the slideshow. And then, in a very mom fashion, she drove the three of us and treated us to a meal there, explaining the format, the car hops, and the homage that they pay to a bygone era, the menu, the food and beverages, and the best choices, which were the jitterbug or the California burgers, explaining each one. And that was her way. Long before I lived with mom and dad as their son in marriage, I felt like their son at heart. I think many people believe the stigma of in-laws, but Samantha and I have always said that we hit the lottery with ours. It was easy to lean into my second family long before it was official because they embraced me as their son and brother. Mom would always hug me right around the midriff, look into my eyes, smile, and say, my son. It was an easy transition from crispy critter to son because of who my second family is and who mom is. She is patient and kind. She isn't jealous and doesn't brag or boast. She isn't arrogant and she doesn't act inelegantly. She doesn't seek her own benefit and she isn't provoked. She doesn't keep an account of a wrong suffered. She doesn't rejoice in unrighteousness but is now rejoicing with the truth. She keeps every confidence she believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. Mom never failed. I will miss her presence. What a soul she was here, charismatic, witty, humble, and down to earth. And all these I will hold in memory and remember when the pain of her absence is too strong. I will hold them in a juxtaposition to the glory she now wears with our coming king. There's a beautiful tradition amongst the Jewish people that when those who have passed on and are mentioned by we who remain, they say this in Hebrew, which is zichona levacha, which is may her memory be for a blessing. And they get that from Proverbs 10.7. We also have recorded in Numbers 6 what the Lord says of how he wants us to bless his people. And so to honor my second mom, I'm going to teach you this blessing in Hebrew. And then I'm going to sing uh, The Blessing by Carrie Job. I'm going to sing the first two verses in English, and then I'm going to sing it in Hebrew. And I'm going to do the bridge in English, and then I'm going to close it out in Hebrew. <clears throat> so in number six, it says that this is what the Lord said to Moses to tell Aaron. This is how I want you to bless my people. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you. May he be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face to you and place on you his peace. In Hebrew, that is, Yivarecha Adonai Vayishmarecha, Ya'er Adonai Panavalecha Vichuneka, Isa Adonai Panavalecha Vayasem Lecha Shalom. Bear with me because I don't have any music to accompany this with. Um, if you know the song and you'd like to sing, I think that would be fitting and totally fine. <clears throat> The Lord bless you and keep you, make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. The Lord bless you and 
keep you, make his face shine upon you, and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Yiverecha the night, Yair Adonai penavalecha vihu neka Isa Adonai penavalecha vayesem lecha shalom Amen Amen upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his presence go before you and behind you and beside you all around you and within you he is with you he is with you in the morning and the evening and you're coming and you're going, and you're weeping and rejoicing. He is for you, 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 he is for you. upon you and a thousand generations in your family and your children and their children and their children may his presence go before you and behind you and beside you all around you and within you he is with you he is with you in the morning and the evening and you're coming and you're going and you're weeping and rejoicing he is for you he is for you amen 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 and I Shalom. <laughs> Thank you so much, Jeff. Next, Faith Gonzalez will come and share some remarks. Good morning. 
Your light shines so bright. Your love was so deep. Your presence made others feel warm, comforted, and loved. You made it feel like home. When I think about our childhood with mom, many feelings come to mind. I remember her tender love. I remember her warm embrace. Every hug was followed by a smile and a kiss. She was a stay-at-home mom for several years. She devoted herself to taking care of her family. She cooked, which included making us eat our vegetables. She cleaned. And could you just imagine the Barbie mess happening at our house with three girls? She cared for us when we were sick. She made us feel safe when we had a bad dream at night. I loved climbing in bed between mom and dad on those nights and being able to snuggle with mom. She disciplined us when we, when I was out of line. I know my sisters are thinking right now, please speak for yourself. We would spend time with mom's sisters and our cousins who are here with us today, Nanan and Aunt Wendy. Mom deeply loved and enjoyed being with her family. Her sisters have this infection, her and her sisters have this infectious laugh that you could hear for miles. On our birthdays, she would bake sugar cookies and set up a cookie decorating station so all of our friends could design and enjoy them. At least 10 times a year, we would smell the aroma of broccoli casserole cooking in the oven. We knew we were headed off to a good night if we smelled it. Holidays at our grandparents' house, potlucks, or her just making it for someone because she wanted to. She made sure to write down the instructions for me so I could have it and be able to make it myself. I know it won't be anywhere near as good as she made it because it was just so good. In the summer, we enjoyed swimming in our pool and going to the beach almost every day we could. Summer nights, she would drive us in her blue minivan to the ice cream shop Flippers Custard in Millville. And if you ever have the chance to go, make sure you try the banana soft serve on a cone because it was mom's favorite. When we became older, mom went back to working as a teacher. I remember her staying up late, grading papers, Students would be in and out for tutoring sessions. There were always these massive math textbooks on the dining room table with big names like calculus, geometry, trigonometry. She sure did love her students. I know many of them are here today. And they were able to experience her loving kindness firsthand. Several of you have reached out to me to let me know how she has personally touched and impacted your lives. She attended this church every Sunday. Mom was a missionettes teacher, attended Sunday school, and taught in children's church. She spent many Sundays singing solo or in the choir. If you don't know by now, Mom's voice was angelic, even opera quality. She would be practicing her songs at home that she would be singing for church or at an event the next day. I can recall many times people requesting her to sing or to let her know how her song just touched them. Mom loved the beach. It was a childhood pastime for her that carried through with her daughters and her grandchildren. She would go down early and stay all day she would get into the ocean and jump with the waves and sit under the umbrella back on the beach. She loved to collect shells and stones from the water's edge. She spent many nights walking on the boards in Ocean City, making sure to get a slice of Manco and Manco or a container of Johnson's popcorn. We have so many good memories at the shore with her. 
family vacations every summer at a beach house or women's retreats at the portico. I'm so glad we were all together, all 15 of us this past June at the shore to celebrate a grandbaby's birthday. Mom enjoyed planting flowers at home. She had tiger lilies, peonies, begonias. Mom read Newsweek magazine. She would faithfully watch 2020 on Friday nights. She enjoyed watching the Phillies. Her favorite collection was comprised of the old classic romance black and white movies. She enjoyed listening to oldies, especially the Beatles, Barbara Streisand, and the Jersey Boys. She enjoyed the time spent with her friends. She has so many amazing friends that she has made over the years going through the best times and the hardest of times with them. Weddings, babies, cell groups, potlucks. Most of you are here today and I can tell you she loved you and she loved all of your children. Each of us had our own special bond with her. We had a lot of good laughs together. Sometimes they were uncontrolled laughs. We would make her laugh as she was trying to place an order for food in a drive through and she wouldn't be able to control or stop laughing to finish placing the order. I know she didn't appreciate that so much, but we sure did have a good laugh. She would take the time to talk to us. If any of us had a problem, she would be right there to give us advice or just lend a listening ear. She was there during our hardships and helped us through the tough times. She would be so strong and always steadfast, always wanting to pray for us. If we told her we were sick or the kids were sick, she would pray right there over the phone. She never held back or had any reserve when it came to praying, worshiping the Lord. She used it as a testimony to others. She was so kind to every person she came in contact with, every stranger. She would always compliment them on something she noticed that was good. That was mom. She would make, she would take gifts intended for her and go buy something for my sisters and I. Today I'm wearing one of those gifts. It's a little butterfly mood ring she gave me not too long ago. She was so happy and so content in life. She didn't need fancy things. She liked the simple things. She liked sitting on the back porch with dad, going to Fortescue to watch the sunset. She was most happy to be with daddy. It seems like they were always together, two peas in a pod. My mom had immense love for my dad. She would always start to giggle around him. We would always joke and tell them to get a room because they just couldn't stop kissing each other. <laughs> Her smile would be so big around my dad. You could just tell she was so happy and proud to be his wife. 39 years of true love and friendship. She was faithful and true. She was a godly wife. She was a supportive wife, a loving wife, his best friend. She was there to gently guide us through the birth of our children and help raise them. We will always, I will always remember coming home from the hospital after having my first baby. I was so happy to be able to go straight to mommy's house since a storm knocked out the power in my own house. She was right there by my side every time the new baby cried and was awake. She showed me what to do so effortless, effortlessly. She drove down to Baltimore to be with Jean after Jean gave birth to Josie to help cook, walk the dog, go to the grocery store, and have the house ready for their return. She would sing praise and worship songs as we were in labor to soothe us and comfort us. At one point, my sister Samantha recalls a nurse looking to mom to see if she was okay as she was bent down with her eyes closed 
Mom gently told her, just praying. She is most loved by her seven grandchildren. She would help them get off the bus after school. She would get on trampolines with them, get out messy Play-Doh for them, jump in waves with them. She would try to get them out of trouble as much as she could, always letting them get away with things that she wouldn't have let us get away with at that age. She just showered them with all of her gentle touch and ever-giving love. Even the kids could sense her presence, her kind, warm, forgiving, and loving spirit. The kids loved to be with her. She is my mom, mom Sherry. She kept memories alive by storytelling. She spoke about her parents often, her life experiences, her hardships, her good times, using them as teaching moments. These will be stories that we will continue to speak of and will stick with us forever. We all enjoyed the good quality time with mom. Our mother-daughter relationship changed into a close bond talking openly about everything and anything, sharing laughs, personal experiences, and always encouraging us. Being together was so joyful. It felt so good to be together. Mom would always say, I love being with my girls. And in return, we would say, Mom, you're so corny. She would always tell us how proud of us she was, even towards the end. She would repeat it quite often. She would look us right in the eyes and say, I love you. We bought her a blue sweater last Christmas to match her beautiful big blue eyes. She wore it frequently, and it looked so beautiful on her. She would love to show off and say, look at my sweater because she would like to show us how proud she was. <sighs> Mom was an example of doing what is right, being a good person in this world, following Jesus, never saying a cruel word, never full of hate, never full of judgment or bitterness, always forgiving, always kind, always loving. We know Mom is well and free in paradise. We know she is with her maker. <sighs> Mommy, our love for you is deep, and we will miss you forever until we meet again. Thank you, Faith. That was beautifully said. The next song Sherry's family has chosen is Jesus Saves.
beautiful song. The redeemed will sing forever. I love that verse in that song. What a beautiful song. Next, Jeannie's going to come and share some remarks with us. Thank you all for coming. Your presence here today is a testament to what kind of person Sherry Siligata was, how she meant so much to so many people. The story of her life is a testament. It's a witness to what a mighty God we serve. Sherry's parents, Yuli and Jean, were not rich. Yuli worked in the Wheaton Glass Factory. Jean stayed at home raising Sherry and her older brother, Yuli, and her two sisters, Nancy and Wendy. Jean was the gentle one who never raised her voice, whose words were always kind, always accepting. And Yuli, he could be a bit of a hothead, I was told, but he was fiercely loyal and devoted. Mom used to joke that she inherited her father's temper, but we all knew better. I saw both of their strengths in her. The Simmermans lived a simple life, I remember mom implying that fried egg sandwiches were a special treat for dinner, and their only vacations were summers in Ocean City in what was basically a cabin with running water. But when she spoke about these things, it was never out of complaint. It was only fondness. She treasured growing up in that little house on 3rd Street in Millville. As I grew older and started to live out my life, I started to understand just how strong a woman my mom really was. When she was only 15, she lost her father to lung cancer. But she kept on. She worked hard and put herself through school and got good grades. And she was a first-generation college student. Talk about self-made. Then at 27, my mom lost Jean, the saint, to stomach cancer. And not long after that, my mom went through a divorce. But I'll get to that later. During my lifetime, she stayed home with the three of us for nine years. I don't know how she did that. Then she went back to work, long days teaching and late nights grading. I don't know how she did that. But despite it all, when mom talked about these times in her life, there was never even a hint of bitterness. She openly talked about those experiences with her daughters as much as she could. She wanted to teach us and she turned her pain into teaching moments to help us walk the right path. If you knew my mom, you knew she could turn anything into a teaching moment. If it snowed, she would explain how every snowflake had its own unique crystalline pattern. One time she used math to describe heaven to me as the fourth dimension, an existence outside of time. She'd even count the beats on the dance floor at weddings out loud because she wanted all of you to know how to do the electric slide. <laughs> she might have retired after 30 years, but she never stopped teaching. At Cumberland Christian, I saw firsthand how gifted a teacher she was. I saw her break down high-level concepts into language a 16-year-old could understand. Many of you have recently told me how you wouldn't have gotten into college or you wouldn't have found your careers without Ms. Sill because many of her students became teachers themselves. Uh, even today, many people told me that. But I did not become a teacher because I saw firsthand how hard it was. <laughs> Said, no thanks. In high school, I heard all of her corny jokes firsthand too. What did the acorn say when it grew up? Gee, I'm a tree. Get it, geometry? <laughs> yep, yeah, we heard a lot of those. One year, she even wrote and performed a skit for the students called Touched by an Angle. <laughs> that was before I got to her class, thankfully. She made so many people laugh with her corny jokes. One of my favorites was in the grocery store checkout one day, and she suddenly stu stood still, picked up a People magazine, 50 Most Beautiful edition, and she said, what? How did they get my picture in here? You could say my mom was a bit of a nerd. I mean, her email address was euclidcool 
at AOL.com, you know, Euclid was the father of geometry. I'm sure you all knew that already. But she totally owned it. She loved Star Trek, Jane Austen movies, romantic comedies. She loved baseball. That, you know, that was a little less nerdy. She saw the Phillies win the World Series in 1980 in the stadium. And even during, you know, those many, many years when they were a lost cause, she still rooted for them, unless they were playing against the Angels, of course. And she didn't care much for technology. She never had a Facebook page. The only computer she ever liked was her graphing calculator. But despite the corniness, Mrs. Silagato was cool. She was so cool. It's not easy to have all your high school friends think your mom is cooler than you. But I didn't mind. Mama Silagato's classroom was a triage center for teenage angst. I saw it firsthand. Students would go to her with their drama, their breakups, trouble at home, or they would just seek her out for a hug. You know, she was the perfect height for a hug. I didn't mind sharing her at all. You know, that quality that Jesus had that made the crowds just run into him and press into him. My mom had that. People just wanted to be in her presence. My mom made the simple wonderful. When she would mop the kitchen on Fifth Street, she'd say, who wants to ice skate? And all three of us girls would hop on towels and slide across the floor doing our version of a triple axle. And when she washed our hair in the tub, she would use the shampoo to make our hair stand up on our heads like a triangle. Because we had bowl cuts, remember those? So. They stood up pretty stiff and she'd say, oh, you have an ice cream cone on your head. And it's something I do with the girls now, with my girls. What a mom she was. She met every challenge you could get from three very different daughters. I won't name names, but she always had the wisdom to know which one of us needed tough love, like the wooden spoon, which one would burst into tears if she heard the word disappointed, and which one of us was on the quiet side and needed the answers slowly drawn out of her. When her grandchildren were born, she knew exactly what each of them needed to. Except, like Faith said, she forgot all about the wooden spoon and she became an instant softy. She'd plead with her daughters, spare her grandsons from any and all punishment. But that's what my moms do. And she was such a fun my mom. She would stick straws into some Play-Doh and call it a birthday cake. She'd get down on the floor and paint seashells with them or build blocks. She'd let them eat ice cream and stay up late, like really late. And got home at 1 a.m. one time and my daughter was still up. Mom said, ah, she just wanted to be with me. I said, okay. <laughs> Fun is a word my mom's friends always use to describe her. If you were blessed enough to be mom's friend, she never let go of you. You were her friend for life. Many of you here have been her girlfriend for 40, 50, even 60 years. When I was a kid, I watched her talk to you for what felt like hours on the phone, and she'd stretch that phone cord all over the house as far as it could go, and it really bothered me until I moved away and I was the one on the other end of the line. Luckily, they were cordless by then, so mom could freely move about the house while she talked. You know, and she didn't just work with you or go to church with you. You guys did life together. First grade, high school, cheerleading, college roommates, work, weddings, vacations, building this building, cell group. We already talked about the broccoli casseroles. You guys just wanted to be together through all of it. You know, I always thought it was a testimony of my mom's graciousness and faithfulness that every year she would watch the Miss America pageant with her ex-mother-in-law, Josephine. And when many people would have just parted ways, mom saw Josephine as a gift from God and treated her like a mom until Josephine was 107 years old. But perhaps the greatest testimony of her life on this earth is her love story with my dad, Sam. Of all those how did you meet stories, theirs is the closest to love at first sight I have ever heard. 
It was 1983, and each of them had just lived through their own terrible heartbreak. Poor dad was listening to monk music and eating Swedish meatballs every night because he couldn't cook. <laughs> but then one of Sherry's newly found girlfriends from Ferriton got the grapevine going, and Sam called Sherry up. He introduced himself, and they talked for quite a few minutes. And I don't know the exact details. They had agreed to go out sometime soon, but something must have clicked because a few minutes after hanging up, the phone rang again. So what are you doing tonight, Sam asked. And they walked the Ocean City boardwalk for four hours straight, and Sherry didn't mind the blisters on her feet one bit. Not long after that, they approached Pastor Moore, and they told him they just want to get married. Just, can you just marry us? Oh, Pastor Moore was not about to have some quick courthouse wedding. He said, absolutely not. You see, Pastor Moore was another gift God had brought into her life, a father when she needed one. Just like my dad's parents, my grandparents, a new mom and dad, not just in law either. So with scarce planning and no invitation, Sam and Sherry told their friends, don't bring us gifts. If you want to come, come. And they did. Over 250 people squeezed into an annex building that Ferriton used to own right around the corner. And they rejoiced over two whose lives had become new, had become one. And the rest is history. Hand in hand. They held hands a lot. They enjoyed the simple joys, like board games, flounder fishing in Whale Creek, cups of tea on the back porch, car rides to Fortescue, yard work, walks. So many long Strathmere walks, just with natural, easy conversation. It was never awkward or tense around them. I thought all marriages were like that when I was a kid, because that's all I knew at home. I really did. You could call their life of 39 years together simple, but remember how I told you that my mom saw wonder in the simple, everyday things? And theirs was a marriage of mutual respect, admiration, and affection. Looking through my mother's eyes, I see their love as a grand, beautiful journey. Mom always told me that God was the great chess player, that if you would let him, he'd arrange the pieces in your life to restore what was lost, and to do incredible miracles. Many of us, we always live like the grass is greener on the other side. But mom knew she had the green grass. Mom was content with every good and perfect gift that God gave her. There was no room for vanity or selfishness in her being. She didn't crave the next big adventure. She knew her life was an adventure. Her life is a testament to God's goodness. And whatever the enemy stole from her, is the enemy stole from her and from us. The Lord restored, and he will restore. And while I mourn, I rejoice, because I know that she is talking, laughing, dancing, and of course teaching up in glory now and forever. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much, Jeannie. That was wonderful. Wonderful. I'd like to now welcome up Pastor Garrett Kenyon. I'm honored to be here today. I sense the presence of the Lord. I accept the glory of the presence of the Lord. Early this morning, I woke before dark, Listen, 
left us. And I found myself praying in the blessings of the Lord and just glorifying God. In languages that I had not learned. But with an anointing that blessed my soul. As I was praying for the service of this morning, not just what I would say, but what would take place here. The same thing had happened almost in a different way. The other morning is her last day. At three o'clock in the morning, I woke without any other thoughts or so forth, found myself speaking in tongues unto the Lord. I didn't know what I was saying, but I soon caught hold of the theme of what he was talking. There was nobody else around. Nobody else lives in my house now. Only the Lord and me. But as I was talking and sharing, I witnessed an experience that I would find later in the day. In that afternoon as we would gather there in the hospital, and I would hear the children, her children, their children, express little things not as well written as today, but out of their hearts, they were having an opportunity to share and Sherry, her smile not leaving her in those hours, but just sharing with them and listening. Later on, as her body was weaker, the oxygen was not there to make it work like it wanted to work. Yet the spirit had not left. And around that room, I felt the glories of God. I think of Sherry today. In a few minutes this morning, we're going to be hearing her sing down from Calvary, the Calvary Road that she sang about five years ago. Here in this very auditorium, this very sanctuary, in the great Easter service. Powerful. When you hear that today, there will not be a dry eye within this place. I heard it because I wanted to be presented. I wanted to know where I was coming in the message this morning. But God has been talking to our hearts. Let me pause for a moment. The Kenyon family today, extended wide, all over the world, sends their thoughts and their prayers with you at this time. What many of you don't know is that Sherry and Sam had a missionary ministry that reached into China. At a time when they could not get mattresses, I'm talking about my family of six there, plus Esther, when they could not get mattresses, somehow Sam remembered all the connections they'd had in the furniture department. And when they went into China, they'd only been able to carry in what was on their backs into China. 
But somehow, don't ask me how, Jerry and Sam arranged for mattresses to arrive way up in Xi'an, China. That's the old capital of China. I got to sleep on one of those mattresses. And let me tell you, it was much better than I found otherwise around. Isn't it interesting how God loves? You know, their connections with the family begin back when Howard and Sam, classmates in school, and Jesus came into Sam's heart, became a preparation for Sherry with it, because Sherry had accepted Jesus back when she was a young girl. And in her teens, she'd received the baptism of the Holy Ghost within her life. And in the experience that took place within her, God gave her a song in her heart. I was reading the other day, and I used it on my radio program last Sunday, a little story about a young boy who wanted to know it's back with the telephones where the box of the wall and, you know, information please type of thing. The little boy, mother, mommy wasn't home and his bird had died and he uh, went to the telephone operator and, and talked to her and asked her how it is that his pet canary would end up to be a heap of feathers on the bottom of the cage. And the telephone operator responded back and told him something like this. Remember, there are other worlds to sing in. And all week long, as I re realized the blessings that Cherry has had right here in this sanctuary of singing and blessing God. I realized that because of it, it's not a transition today, it's a translation today that has taken place. Hope has become real. And where is Cherry? <laughs> She's somewhere around the throne of God. You, can you imagine all the people that are there in heaven? So where, where would her place? It doesn't, wouldn't matter. She's just as close as God to God as anybody else. And what do I believe she's doing? She's joining the angels sing, singing today. I thought my uh, hall of fame was the days that I got to sing with Sherry in a choir. You know, when the Ferriton and First Assembly would join our choirs together, and, you know, we'd have some of these beautiful singers like her. And then some of we, I won't even go it, and I mentioned, only mentioned names here, but, you know, some of us were different. But when I think about it, I think of how this hope has brought a girl who has been faithful over the years, and you've heard the story. She's been faithful to her family. She's been faithful to her husband. She's been faithful to the Lord. And with it, it brings us the trust that we find in the book of Proverbs, the 31st chapter. And I was going to read it this morning, but I'm going to let you read it at home afterwards and make it a part of your life of remembering each time talking about Cherry. On her lap today, there is a book, the first copy of this book ever published is on her lap right now. It was not here for the people that were through the lines last night, but it arrived even afterwards. And you know what that book is entitled? 
That book is entitled Issues of the Heart. And who was it written by? Her husband, Sam. You know, he, I talked with Sherry's math teacher this week. She's 103 years old. And she told me, Miss Luella Dreyer told me about what a good student she was. But how could it be that in her marriage, Sam and Sherry together, both were math students, and they could understand the same areas, whether it was algebra, trigonometry, or you name it, it was all within their conversation together. Maybe it's no wonder that some of those walks were so long, because some of those equations were very long also when you think about it. You know, I had a lot of notes written here today, but God is saying to my heart that God loves us. And he loves you. I was reading in Hebrews, uh, not Hebrews, but uh, uh, yes, I was reading in Hebrews where it says, well done, thou good and faithful servant. I was reading over the book of Revelation that tells about there's now it says, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, say the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, and their works do follow them. I've been reading a number of areas of comfort and hope, but I found those words expressed by the family and in the songs today, and I will not repeat them, but to say amen to them all. And with it today, in a few moments, we're going to be listening to the song that she sang on Easter Sunday down Calvary Road. But just before it, we're going to open the floor for a few moments to, we ask that you keep them very short. But pastor is coming. He's a fine pastor. And he's coming at this time to open the floor to you that would love to share. Pastor? Thank you so much, Pastor Ken. If anyone would like to come now and briefly share. I don't know how you girls did this. I'm going to try my best. Sherry was my best girlfriend for over 40 years, and I know some of people in this room knew Sherry longer because you went to high school with her or college or whatever. But I met Sherry through Dan Wright when he was working at Memorial with Sherry, and he invited her to come to Fairton Church. When she came to Fairton Church, I really didn't know her at all, but I kind of knew she was a good match for Sam. So I nudged Sam a little bit, and believe me, I did not have to nudge him very much. But he did, but he did ask Sherry out, and as we heard, they had that long conversation on the boardwalk, and I'm so happy about that. And the next time they went on the boardwalk, it was a double date with Dan and I. And Dan and I were already married, but they were, you know, just a new dating couple. And Sherry and I went into the restroom, and we just laughed and giggled, and the four of us just hit it off so wonderfully. And we just said, Sherry, wouldn't it be so cool if you and Sam would get married? Wouldn't it be so awesome if you had kids and we had kids and we raised our kids together and we did holidays and activities and fun vacation and everything together? And the men had no idea. We had totally planned their lives, but we had just had this awesome conversation of how our life could be together. And that's exactly how it was for 40 years. We never called them the Siligatos. They were always the Sills. 
And of course, even my boys, when they were very little, well, they couldn't say, you know, Sam and Sherry or the Suligados. We'd say, we're going to Sam and Sherry's. And they would say, Hamashui, Hamashui. We'd go Hamashui. And that's what we did. We went to Ham and Shui's house. But um, Sherry was such a beautiful person. This is kind of what I wrote as a tribute on Samantha's Facebook. She's such a beautiful person inside and out. We've been best friends for over 40 years, and I'm heartbroken, and I miss her already so much. She was so gifted, talented, fun, and funny. She was my women's retreat roommate for many years until her daughters were old enough to go to the retreats, and then she roomated. She was uh, roomed with them. Um, she was my um, my singing buddy in choir, and we have a song that we have been known to sing together with my husband, sometimes with Claudette, and that was Through the Years, and how appropriate is that song title right now, Through the Years. She was my phone a friend in games. Sherry had such a trivia knowledge of everything. If we were ever anywhere, we'd say, call Sherry, she'll know the answer to that, and she always did. She was my phone a friend in games, and she was my phone a friend in life, and I was one of those that was always talking hours on the phone with her. Sam and Sherry were our chicken pot pie dinner pals, and we have done chicken pot pie dinners for 40 years, three times a year. That's a lot of chicken pot pie we have eaten together. She and Sam were our go-tos for vacations. We've done Disney, we've done cruises, we've done Key West, we've done holidays, we've done beaches and beach homes together, we've just done so many wonderful things, so we have so many wonderful memories of that. She was my mama jama or my mama sita, which is what we would say when we talk to each other on the phone. She was my moviegoer friend, my card game compadre. After we'd have chicken pot pie, Sam and Sherry would come over and we would have cutthroat rummy games, which was a lot of fun. Um, she was involved in the prison ministry with us as well. She belonged, Sam and Sherry, to our cell group, so they were my cellies um, for many years. And now she will always say she was not a baker, but she could always buy a mean pack of cookies from ShopRite and bring them along to any gathering and also to any uh, official event. She was known for her broccoli casserole, and we've all enjoyed that over the years. And I also have the recipe. I've never made it because she always made it so now I'm gonna have to brush it off and uh, try it and try to make it somewhat as tasty as, as she always made it but she was the closest female friend I had on this earth she was like a sister to me because I never had sisters so she was not only a sister in that realm to me but she was a sister in the Lord she will never be forgotten she will never be replaced a true friend forever. I'm sorry. I loved her beautiful blue eyes and her angelic voice, and we called her our songbird because that's what she was for us. I truly love her, and I will truly miss her. And I say goodbye for now, but I should just say so long for now because I will see her again on the shores of heaven once again. I'll end with that. Thank you. Hi. Anybody that doesn't know me, I'm Susie. I'm the one that Carol was talking about. <laughs> um, Sherry is my best friend, and she's been my best friend for 62 years. Uh, we started in first grade together in Culver School, and this is Nichols' class. Um, this past week, I've had so many memories flooding back into my head. Um, think places we went together, things we did together, times we got in trouble together, which that wasn't real often, but you know. Um, how, mu how much time do we have? We have a couple hours, because I could, I could go through a lot of them, but I do, have a, I do have a couple that I wanted to share with you. When we were growing up, you hardly ever saw one of us without the other one. We both lived on 3rd Street, and we would meet halfway, and she would come to my house for the weekend, and we'd spend the weekend together, or I'd go to her house and spend the weekend at her house. 
her family was my family. Um, her brother and sisters were my brother and sister. When she married Sam, and when they had their beautiful daughters, my extended family grew. Um, an example of how close we were, uh, when we were in high school, we always had a talent show. And for the talent show one year, we took a pair of her brother Yuli's, two pairs of Yuli's pants, and we cut them and made a pair of pants that had three legs. And we put our middle legs in between the pants and we sang together wherever we go. Um, during our sleepovers, one of our favorite things to do was to play records, a brand new record, Beatles, whoever it might be, over and over and over again, write down all the words, and then we would sing them. One of our favorite ones was Marvin Gaye and Tammy Terrell, and uh, Sherry was Marvin Gaye, I was Tammy Terrell. Um, we would sing Your Precious Love, and it was, Heaven must have sent you from above. Darling, heaven must have sent your precious love. Heaven must have sent Sherry from above. I know heaven sent Sherry from above. God in heaven blessed me when he gave Sherry to me to be my best friend. He sent her precious love to fulfill my life. I thank you, Lord, for letting me have her in my life for 62 years. I love you, Sherry. I'll see you soon. My name is Melody. I am one of um, Sherry's high school students she had back in high school for math. Um, Mrs. Sill was one of my favorite teachers. Um, math was not my strong suit in school, and Mrs. Sill knew that. But she would always be so patient with me, allow me to come after school to give me extra help and extra support. Um, I did not like math in high school, but I always looked forward to it because I knew I was going to see Mrs. Sill. Um, she inspired me to become a teacher. I remember distinctly looking at her um, when I was staying after school and just thinking to myself, I will, I will not be as good of a teacher as Mrs. Sill. But what, that's something that I'll get to strive for for the rest of my life. Everybody that had her um, always felt her love and her light. She loved her students first, and then she taught her students. I didn't remember what I learned from her in high school with math-wise, but I remember her being such a role model for me. I remember her looking at me one day and saying, Melody, math is not the most important thing in life but loving and following Jesus is. Um, she lived such a testimony, and I know her legacy lives on through her husband, through her kids, through her grandkids, and all of the kids that she had in high school that she taught. Um, she's very well loved, and she is very missed. Hi. I know it's not a can you top this, but I've known Sherry for 50 years. And I don't think there's too many of you who know me or the college roommates who came here today. So we met when we were 18, and we were silly girls. Sherry had the best sense of humor. She could just turn in a minute to find something funny in something. And she was the nicest of all of us. Sherry. It's just nice. And in this day and age, in this world, there's something about just being nice. 
and faithful. And if there's anybody I am definitely sure is up in heaven rejoicing, it's Sherry Sue. And I used to call her Sherry Sue. I didn't know that was her given name until I read it the other day. But we, um, we met in the dorm, and then we got an apartment. There were five of us in two bedrooms, one bathroom, so to say. We were very close. On, on Saturday nights, we were all in that one bathroom together. And Sherry, I don't uh, do math. As a verb, I don't math. I just, God gave me lots of talents. That's not one of them. But we had Sherry who would figure out all our bills to the penny. penny. Our, our uh, monthly fee was $33.33. .33. And Sherry told you. And then we went grocery shopping, and she would didn't need a calculator. She would figure out what you owed, and she would do the whole thing. She took such good care of us. But she was just so good, so kind, so upbeat. And uh, we love her. So uh, we have. there were the five of us. We, we got together. Last was in uh, May at Jane's house in LBI. And we knew something was going on with Sherry. We knew last year when we saw her at Christmas. And I walked up to her. I came in late, and I walked up to her. And she looked at me with this look like she wasn't sure who I was. And she said, you, I love you. That, that's, I'll, I'll keep that forever because that's how. She didn't know me, but she knew me. And she, she was the, just the kindest of all of us. I mean, no, you know, girls at 18 in that small space could get to bickering, and there's boyfriends, and, you know, whatever. Not Sherry. Sherry, always, always the kindness. And I was telling the girls, we know a lot more about you than you do of us. And we were so happy when Sam came along. We were sort of from afar, but we knew what was going on. And uh, what a wonderful family, and what a, tri what a tribute. Thank you. Thank you all of you for coming and sharing such beautiful words about Sherry. We have a final song that we're going to share with you now.
Amen. Let's just. Powerful singer. We still have to sing Jesus Loves Me. Do you want to do that? Oh, I totally forgot I was supposed to introduce Jesus Loves Me. Sorry, Tom. Um, Mom always sang this, uh, she sang this at a lot of funerals, but we wanted to sing it together in joy and rejoicing. Pastor Kenny is going to come back up and close us in a word of prayer. Yes, Jesus, today you love us. And you loved Sherry. And through your love in Sherry, you've loved a lot of people. We've heard witnesses, testimonies to this today. And there have been numerous that have written notes and other areas that they've wanted to express themselves. Her love, whether it was through that of a schoolroom or in missionettes, Sunday school, wherever in the friends that came by, the children's friends, the multitude of friends. God, thank you that you loved her, but you love us too. And I would ask that that simple message today would be the strength of this family within this hour. Three beautiful daughters, three beautiful son-in-laws, seven grandchildren, a brother and two sisters, extended family that has come through friendships, and all minister to all within this time. I realize that our hearts hurt, and you tell us not to cry, but it's all right to cry. But you tell us there is hope. And Lord, I realize that we're sharing today that there may be someone who's amongst us, who's been a part of us, who's that, who that hope is not so real to today. They're going through a struggle in their mind, in their heart. There's issues in their heart at this hour. 
I would pray that your divine peace would come. And that before they would lay their heads upon their pillows tonight, that they would accept that love of Jesus to be so beautiful. Lord, we just heard Sherry on tape, video, whatever it might be, sing so beautiful about the way down Calvary's road. May we all walk with her today down that road that now has turned into not only a resurrection, but has turned into basically a rapture for her. And the hope has become real. And Lord, whether she's singing or just smiling, whether she's just sharing or just being herself before you, surround her family, surround her friends, and keep them in perfect and wonderful peace. We ask of this now in the name of God the Father, Jesus Christ the Son and the Comforter, the Holy Spirit. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Pastor Kenyon, we love you. We love you, and we love this congregation, and we love this family. Precious. Thank you, Pastor Kenyon. I'm going to ask our funeral director to come, and he's going to give you some instructions for what we'll be doing next. Thank you. A reminder that there will be a reception at the church cafeteria after the committal service at Mount Pleasant Cemetery today. And we would ask Sherry's immediate family to remain seated. All others, we would ask that you would exit immediately to your cars so we can line up for procession to go to the cemetery for burial. And please observe all traffic signs and proceed through the intersection with caution. If you are serving as a pallbearer today, please stay at the front of the sanctuary for further instructions. Thank you. <laughs>